Hello there, thanks for coming by PosterCentral.com's video blog today. I'm Pete Howard, and here's a R&B queen if there ever was one. Aretha Franklin, step aside, it's Ruth Brown from 1956 and the Mambo Club in Wichita, Kansas. Wow, how nice is this, huh? Definitely known as the queen of R&B, Ruth Brown. She owned the 1950s in that genre, no doubt about it. She had a top ten hit in late 49, a top ten hit in late 59, and in between had 20 top 10 R&B hits, and she just was a monster in the genre. And um, in fact, she had so much big and early success, including 1950, the first full year of her run. Uh, she had a record, Teardrops From My Eyes, that was number one for three months. I mean, this gal was the biggest selling Atlantic Records artist of the 1950s, and that's saying a lot, because you had Ray Charles and other people there. But Anyway, she gained a nickname that's interesting. She was known as, uh, or I should say the record label was known as, the house that Ruth built. <laughs> she brought in so much money, and of course alluding to the Yankee Stadium nickname as well, so that's pretty cool. So here we have an original, beautiful condition, 1956, 14 by 22 inch cardboard window card. And uh, just really styling nicely, and obviously was stored well, no tack holes or tape marks or anything like that, like you usually find. And uh, show you Ruth's picture here again. And interestingly, they have one song above her name and one below. Above her name, of course, is Sweet Baby of Mine. And that was um, her most recent top ten record from May of this year, 56. Although it charted for just one week, which I thought was odd. So I actually contacted Joel Whitburn, who puts together the Billboard chart books. And I asked him if, uh, you know, if a record goes top ten, but it charts just one week and is gone. I mean, when is a hit not a hit? And Whitburn was nice enough to write back and say that absolutely was a hit. It is so difficult to get on the charts, even back then, that if you went on and you popped on at number 10 and couldn't hold on, you still were in the top 10 that week, and you had a big hit for a week. So he said it's very valid. So indeed, Sweet Baby of Mine, even though charted for one week, it was a top 10 or so. Add it to her list of many, many more. And then... Below her name is the very famous record, on the other hand, 5, 10, 15 hours. My goodness. Back in 52, four years before this concert, it charted for four months, not one week, and it was number one for two of those months. So you have a one-weeker and an absolute monster <laughs> as the song titles. I think that's really fun. And then below Ruth, you have Billy Clark and his orchestra. Now, interestingly, the Mambo Club there in Wichita, Kansas, that opened in uh, 1950, and four years later, Ruth Bound had a number one hit with Mambo Baby. So there's some nice synchronicity there, and you can be sure every time she played the Mambo Club, she played Mambo Baby. I mean, she would sort of have to, you know. So not long after this, right after this, in fact, her, um, her pop career started. She had not charted anything on the pop charts yet, but uh, Lucky Lips hit in early 1957, went top 30, and the same with uh, top 30, This Little Girl of My, This Little Girl's Gone Rockin', in 1958, and she was often running in the mainstream after being the queen of just R&B for all the previous few years. Um, but she was done with the charts altogether by 1960. However, if you're a fan of pop culture and you follow celebrities and things like that, you'll know that Ruth Brown went on to a nice career uh, in subsequent years in film, television, Broadway, and touring. Even toured with Bonnie Raitt once. And uh, she did things like that well into the 2000s. So she was a real trooper. And some people know her best, by gosh, for fighting the good fight for musicians, royalties, and rights. Especially R&B and black musicians, obviously. And that led to the founding of the Rhythm and Blues Foundation, which now collects old royalties from people who hadn't paid them and stuff. And a lot of old musicians have benefited from that foundation. So Ruth lives on in our hearts on many different levels. And this one was for simply one night of concert fun in Wichita, Kansas, back in 1956. So, a lot of fun to show you. Hope you enjoyed seeing it. And uh, we'll see you next time with something equally as tasty, hopefully. Okay, take care. Bye-bye.